Joining us now, Leon Panetta, he's a former Secretary of Defense, former Director of the CIA, also served uh, as the White House Chief of Staff under President Bill Clinton. Uh, impressive resume uh, by Leon Panetta. Thank you so much, Mr. Secretary, for joining us. Uh, uh, you probably heard this, but the current U.S. Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin, says Russia is now making in incremental gains in the South. Do you see signs that Ukraine's military, though, is starting to falter under this en enormous and brutal Russian offensive? Well, there's no question that uh, the Russians have overwhelming strength there, uh, and uh, they're trying to apply it uh, in every area, particularly now in the South. Uh, so Lloyd Austin is probably right. They're making some uh, incremental steps uh, to, to really move the ball here. Uh, in terms of uh, being able to take over areas. But I think the Ukrainians are still putting up a hell of a fight. Uh, they're, they really have stalled uh, the Russian army in a number of ways. They've delayed their ability to uh, move forward. Uh, the Russians are using, obviously, these missiles. They're using artillery. Uh, they're engaged in uh, wanton killing of innocent men, women, and children. Uh, I still think that the Ukrainians uh, have a fighting chance here. To be able to uh, to to send a clear message to Putin that uh, he's a loser in this war. U.S. officials are confirming today, and you've heard this as well, that Russia is now using these hypersonic missiles. These are weapons that travel at Mach 5 speeds, and they're using these missiles inside Ukraine. How significant of a development is this? Well, you know, we. We seem to be worried, uh, and, and we should be, about escalating uh, the war there in Ukraine. I, I understand those concerns, but Putin is not worried about that. Uh, by using hypersonic uh, missiles like this, he is escalating uh, the war in Ukraine uh, and uh, using the kind of missiles uh, that not only travel at supersonic speeds, uh, but can avoid uh, detection on the ground. Uh, this is a... Uh, this is a weapon that uh, can really ultimately escalate this battle uh, because uh, we can't allow those kinds of hypersonic missiles to be able to now target uh, areas wherever they want uh, and not have the ability to bring them down. Uh, this is, uh, I think this is a dangerous escalation in the war. Yeah, that's what I've been hearing all day right now. This could really, really escalate what's already a horrible situation. As you know, the Ukrainian uh, uh, President Vladimir Zelensky, he wants direct peace talks with Russia. But do you see a scenario in which that happens? Putin uh, doesn't seem to want any kind of peace talks right now with the Ukrainians. Uh, well, look, we, we know one thing, that Putin, uh, Putin operates by force. Uh, he's been doing that most of his life. Uh, and it's exactly what he's doing in Ukraine now, is uh, the, the wanton application of military force. And very frankly, the only thing he understands is the use of force. So that's why it's absolutely critical that we provide uh, as much weaponry and assistance and military support as possible to the Ukrainians right now because their ability to continue this fight, uh, that more than anything else, killing Russians and stalling their advances, that more than anything else sends a message to Putin that he's in trouble. If the Ukrainians want to negotiate, and, and obviously they should try to negotiate, but they need leverage, and the best leverage they can get is by getting the Ukrainians the help they need to be able to fight the Russians. As you know, President Biden on Friday uh, in a two-hour phone conversation with China's uh, Xi Jinping, uh, he spoke of consequences should the Chinese decide to actually help the Russian invasion. What do you expect China to do as a result of, of that phone call? You know, my sense is that, uh, uh, and, and I, I've talked to people uh, with uh, some knowledge about uh, the impact uh, that the Ukrainian war has had uh, with regards to China. I think it has made President Xi pause uh, in just exactly what he's going to do. Uh, I think he's going to be very careful uh, and walk a fine line here. Uh, 
trying to obviously provide some words of encouragement to Russia. But in terms of actions, I think China knows that if they take steps to provide military weapons or uh, significant economic aid, uh, that they're going to be labeled uh, a pariah, just like Putin is labeled a pariah. And frankly, China cares about China. They know that if they do that, it will impact on their economy. It'll impact on, on everything they've tried to do in order to influence other countries to work with China. Uh, I don't think they want to pay that price. So I I'm glad that the president did that. Uh, and I think we just got to make very clear that if they do that, they're going to pay a price. They certainly will. Uh, uh, you, I don't know if you heard about this, but Ukraine's former president, Poroshenko, just a few hours ago, right here on CNN, said he thinks President Biden should travel to Kyiv uh, this week. He's going to uh, Brussels for the NATO summit. Uh, if you were still in the Oval Office working with the president, uh, would you advise President Biden to make that trip? It clearly would be pretty risky. Well, as a former chief of staff, your, your primary concern is protecting the president of the United States. Uh, and, and I think uh, that should, should be the primary concern at this point, uh, which is to make sure that we protect the president in every way possible. Uh, if there's a way for him to meet with Zelensky uh, and it's secure and can be done without jeopardizing uh, the president's security, I would say that they should look at, that, that possibility. But I think for the president to go into the middle of a war zone uh, at this point in time, uh, I'd have to say that, that really makes me very concerned about the president's safety. Yeah, earlier, uh, a few days ago, three uh, NATO allies, uh, leaders of three NATO countries did make that risky trip to Kyiv and met with uh, the Ukrainian leader. Uh, we'll see what happens when the president is in Europe this week. Uh, Secretary Panetta, as usual, thanks so much for joining us. Good to be with you, Wolf.